If you would just like to take your seats, we'll just kick off. Okay, so I hope you're all suitably refreshed and ready for the next session. Now, assuming that all the slides are here, fingers crossed, we won't dwell on anything that's gone before. Sorry, Charlie. Um, this is, uh, these snapshot sessions are really just to set the, the scene for the afternoon. So we've already heard some of the experience from the Basque Country in Puglia just about their application um, of the Scirocco tool and what they found. But these snapshots are very, very short, five-minute presentations. So we will be really tight on time. So I'm looking at all my snapshot presenters to say, we'll give you the one-minute card and you'll be off. Um, so they're just very short snapshot presentations from um, some of the key regions in Europe that have tested the tool. So they're going to just tell you a little bit about what they found, how they applied it, and the, the very short summary of the outcomes. And then in the ensuing um, uh, implementation sessions for the rest of the day, we'll actually start to drill down much more into some of the dimensions of the model, and they'll tell you more about their experiences and really what they found and where they're going. So we'll get much more into the guts of what's happening in those regions. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce... Um, uh, Saul, who asked a question earlier. So Saul is first up from Flanders, and she's going to give us the overview. Thank you. Thank you for the indications. Or oh, this would be the reason why Belgium is staying, actually, because we don't have the experts, we need the others. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'm Sol V. Wallin, but everybody calls me Sol, so feel free to call me Sol as well. I work in the Flanders Agency for Care and Health, and I deal mainly with international health issues, and I follow up the, um, the reform of the primary care in Flanders since uh, 2014. There was the, the latest uh, um, sixth or the sixth state reform, so the devolution of competences towards the, uh, the regional levels. Um, uh, I think that we are known for uh, Belgium as uh, having a complex situation on many issues, but definitely on health matters. We are with seven authorities responsible for health matters, so although primary care is a competence of the regional level, we, st we still have to cooperate with the others, with the other regions, but also with the federal level. Uh, it's very important to know that uh, Belgium has a compulsory health uh, care insurance, which um, is uh, actually uh, fed by uh, all working people. They have to contribute via the social uh, sec security, and all entitled persons are affiliated to a sickness fund. What is very important and, and was, was very difficult, which basically is also a difficulty to, uh, in, in a primary care reform, is that uh, Belgium is very proud, and we will st still keep it like this, uh, about the freedom of choice for patients. So there's no gatekeeping and about the therapeutic uh, freedom and independency of the physicians. So healthcare may be state controlled, but uh, it's still executed by private, not for profit. And that means that uh, the majority of physicians are independent or self-employed and the hospitals, uh, many, many of them are private and not for profit. What is our definition of integrated care? I don't think we, call, we can call it a real definition. It was when we started the process that we identified that what we needed uh, for integrated care is that the person with the care need was in the center. And uh, around that, there are many issues that need to be tackled, like the integrated approach, uh, like the integra integration of prevention, mental health care, revalidation, uh, residential care, social policy, and, and so on. Um, definitely thinking about the carer and the, certainly the informal carer who should be really as part of a partner in the whole care. The care aims should be around the person but via a care plan. 
Um, more care in the neighborhood was very important. We were talking also about what are, you know, the citizens are contributing to, towards it and as well the promotion of self-management and uh, skills. And this is our spider diagram. I'll leave it up to you. I think you will be able to have a look at it later on. Feel free if you have some questions. But uh, the, uh, basically what I was asked to is to give in, in the self-assessment uh, in the outcomes of, of Flanders that we think is important now to share with you. Uh, our strengths, definitely breadth of ambitions and readiness to change. The why, I will come back to you later on, but definitely this is only the start of it. So in 2017, Flanders endorsed the whole action plan on uh, primary care reform. So the ambition was there. It was a complete process for more than one year and a half, and the sectors as well as the policy levels were uh, happy and ready to change. What we felt at that time, around February when we made up uh, the assessment, was that we were weaker in, in what was basically going back to the, to the person, like the population approach um, at the level where I am sitting. So we made the, uh, uh, the assessment together with the primary care team, those who were responsible actually for putting the whole reform into action and uh, into uh, uh, a, a strategy as well. And uh, we felt in there, my colleagues felt that what I didn't know was what has, was really happening on the ground. So we said, okay, the population-wide uh, risk stratification was not well developed, but is under development. And we see now already outcomes of it because near the end of the year, uh, Flanders will be divided into primary care zones who are really going back to uh, the, the uh, as close as possible to the patients. There might be some 60 over and will include something like 75,000, 125,000 uh, people. We are quite closely dense uh, population coverage in, in Flanders as well. And the other that I choose actually for the weakness is on standardization and simplification. Um, I think I have to make one small remark on this one, that's also why I choose it. It's because we were assessing uh, the, 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 this, this uh, standardization and simplification from the point of view of the primary care team. We're sure that if the ICT colleagues would have done this, that it would have come to maybe a different outcome. But definitely, we thought, yes, there is standardization when you see a different sectors. Uh, that is, that's fine. But for example, on, in ICT, the software providers in Flanders, have no standardization. Um, this is also a choice of Flanders. But it's evolving, and I will probably still come back to this later on, or uh, if anyone has a question on it, I will be happy to contribute to it. And now I come to the last slide, where you see this is my colleague, Daniel Masson, who is basically uh, the head of the team of primary care. And thank you very much. So as Saul says, if anyone's got any questions that you want to ask of uh, what's happening in Flanders, you know who she is now. So next up is Isabella. Um, Isabella, I'm not going to try and pronounce your surname. I'm sorry. It's oh, excellent. Good. I'm glad. From Hungary. So welcome. So good morning, everybody. My name is Isabella Notarangelo. I work for HOPE, the European Hospital and Healthcare Federation. But uh, today I'm here on behalf of ICT for Life project. Uh, we had the pleasure of implementing Scirocco methodology for exploitation purposes, meaning to ensure the correct scaling up of uh, the technology created during uh, this project, ICT for Life, in three, uh, pilots, in three pilots geographical area, meaning Hungary, um, uh, Paris region, and the uh, community of Madrid. Today here I am presenting the results obtained by the implementation of Scirocco methodology in Hungary. So Hungary is quite a, a centralized country in terms of definition of health, of health policy, the uh, main actor is, of course, the central government, but together with the central government, there are already, th there are also other uh, entities that are responsible for the organization and the functioning of 
uh, the healthcare system. Um, in Hungary, there are both uh, private and public uh, provider of care, and uh, there is also this functional privatization, meaning that the central government could decide of outsourcing secondary and, pri uh, and primary care to uh, private provider while uh, retaining the ownership. Uh, the uh, definition of integrated care that uh, uh, I decided to apply has been elaborated by Hope Exchange participant in 2016. Uh, according to this definition, there are four key points that uh, uh, emerged. Uh, the first one is integrated care as a way to provide care closer to patients' home. The second dimension is uh, that uh, integration of care have uh, different settings, meaning that it could be intended as integration between you know, hospital and community, hospital care and primary care, or health care and social care. Another key aspect emerged was the importance of ICT uh, as a tool to support the correct flow of information between uh, the patient and the provider, but also among the provider. And the fourth uh, key point was that uh, um, it is crucial the involvement of multidisciplinary teams. Uh, these are the first results, these are the results actually of the use of the uh, Scirocco tools. The two dimensions that I choose uh, as a strength are structure and governance. Why? So in Hungary, uh, a strategic document has been released uh, in order to um, address resources for the care of chronic patients uh, uh, in the year 2013-2020. Uh, such resources should also be uh, aimed at promoting more integrated, more integrated system of care. The second dimension is standardization and simplification. So Hungary put in place a uh, ICT uh, inf infrastructure at the national level, uh, allowing the information exchange among healthcare providers. Together with this initiative uh, have been uh, implemented also a report repository of uh, uh, electronic health records, um, uh, initiatives aimed at uh, uh, ensure the integration of registries, and also the so-called e-referral e and e-receipt system. Um, if we talk about weaknesses, the first, uh, the first uh, dimension that has been rated not that positively is the citizen empowerment. Something that really um, called my attention was uh, the feedback of a stakeholder who took part at the survey who said that uh, healthcare provision is uh, intended in Hungary as a grace provided by the state. So citizens are not that involved in the process of definition of health policies. Um, together with the citizen empowerment, we have the evaluation method. Um, evaluation methods are indeed very important, but uh, often they are not um, uh, implemented or they are not that advanced. Uh, however, there are um, uh, regional uh, differences uh, according to this, uh, to this uh, dimension. Thank you very much. Excellent and fascinating, actually. I'm very interested in your rating, not that that's for this session, but you only rated yourself a two, and yet you seem to have a lot of ICT infrastructure in place. I think you were a little harsh on yourself there. I would maybe raise that a little. <laughs> anyway, moving on uh, to Francesca Avolio from Puglia region. Francesca? I just think anyone will be like, um, <laughs> like Philip. I'll try to be. Good morning. So I uh, represent Puglia region. You heard about me uh, before. And um, I want just to give you an idea of where Puglia is uh, in Italy. Uh, there are 4 million people uh, that, that live in, uh, in, uh, in Puglia. 
40% of which is, is chronic patients, and 21% 21, 21 is over 65. So for us, uh, it was a, a real issue, uh, the fact of uh, um, trying to give a, a complete change of approach to uh, delivery of care in our region. Uh, in, 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 uh, in Puglia, the healthcare system is uh, mainly public. Uh, we, we have a beverage system like all over Italy, basically, but uh, regions are independent in how to organize uh, the system inside in order to uh, satisfy the needs uh, from different points of view, epidemiological and, uh, and, uh, and functional. Um, there are also private hospitals, but works, some are private, completely private, but most of them works uh, in the, in, uh, supported by the, national, the regional government that can choose as accredited, we say, by the, uh, and they all cooperate for the uh, right delivery of care. Um, when we under, underwent uh, these reorganization of services, uh, um, uh, we had to change quite a lot, move, shift uh, a lot of uh, care from hospital to the community. And uh, now the system is organized in 49 districts and uh, divided in six uh, local health authorities. Uh, we have uh, five second level hospitals, so uh, uh, basically excellence hospitals, 16 first level hospitals, <laughs> and uh, 12 basic hospitals that are closer to the uh, municipalities and communities. Uh, among these, there are two hospital trusts because we have the School of Medicine in, uh, in Puglia and two research hospitals. This, uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, slide is just to show you how are set, set in, uh, uh, in, uh, on the territory, divided on the territory, the hospital, five, five uh, first level officers, 16 second level hospital, 16 first level, 12 basics, because Puglia is now very long, so we needed to cover the entire territory. But what we did, basically, in this change, we, uh, most of the hospital uh, that were once hospital was transformed in integrated health community centers, so that were not empty boxes, but is where patients can, f can uh, find closer to their own uh, homes uh, all these uh, services uh, delivered. And supported to that, we had uh, introduced the integrated healthcare models that actually has been, uh, um, uh, has been in, uh, in implemented in Puglia since 2004, and, uh, but it was only a piloting in a small area. And now we are on the version 3 because with this pushing on the sustainability, we needed to extend the integrated care model to, um, to, the, to the, all the citizens. It's based on uh, GP's uh, organization. I'll show you in this picture, who is basically the main actor together with nurse, specialist, and connection with hospital, with the nurse in hospital, all facilitated and enabled by the ICT platforms that created the right connections and the right flow of information, which, which are uh, fundamental for the disease and care management of patients, which is not at the center of the, uh, of, the, of, the, uh, of the of care, but basically he's actor, first actor, and at the center is the care plan that is all agreed among in the, in the team, care, care team. This is our self-assessment. As you can see, and I was saying before, uh, our major strengths were uh, structuring and governance, uh, finance and funding, uh, and capacity building. Because uh, um, what we did mainly in our, in our region in order to push towards uh, this uh, new reorganization, it was first of all to put down uh, new regulation, new laws, uh, to have a strong infrastructure in order to push strongly this, uh, this change. And th to do that, you need to, uh, to invest in capacity building because the readiness to change goes through changing also uh, a lot of training of professionals. The, uh, the average age of our professional is quite uh, high. So they are very, uh, very resistant to change. Um, and so we, need, we needed to work on that. And of course, finance and funding. So we need to work close with the um, Department of, of Economic Development in order to use structural funds, because in Puglia is a convergence re region, so we have a lot of structural funds for making the change. Strangely enough, empowerment was a weak point, and we invested a lot in patient empowerment. Why is that? Because in the assessment, we involved citizens. And what happened was that we realized that, thanks to them, that there was a, a great issues of health inequalities because there was not enough information uh, at, at, the, at the end level. So citizens didn't know that only in few areas you could have a full-scale deployment, in two districts, full-scale deployment of, 
of the integrated CAD model, but we can discuss that later. And so this will lower down the, uh, and make that a weak point. And, uh, but what's really, what was really important for us is that towards the validation of the tool is that when we got the two stars as reference site and we presented our models, um, we actually got two stars. That means that we have everything in place and we are ready to go while we are not still taking off. And the picture of our consensus was exactly uh, lying on that, uh, on, that, uh, on that level of maturity. So for us, it was a good confirmation. It was a real picture of the situation. And we think that it's very important for our validation. Thank you. Thank you. Francesca, that was excellent. Um, and uh, next up, we have, uh, interestingly, Isabella again. Oh. Do you know what? That was really interesting. I was thinking, no, I can't be right. Maybe I've got an old version. Anyway, so excellent. Thank you. <coughs> OK, so I have already introduced myself. Uh, so, let's talk about Ile-de-France, uh, which is uh, one of the regions uh, interested by the uh, exploitation of the results of the ICT for Life project. So, um, in France, uh, there is uh, uh, a universal healthcare system, which is based on this statutory health insurance. Uh, even also here, there are many actors contributing in uh, uh, defining the health uh, policies. Uh, the central government <laughs> is, however, uh, responsible for regulation. Uh, other important actors are the uh, statutory health insurance as well as the regional uh, entities. Uh, in France, there is uh, a system based on a mixed provision of care. There are public actors together with private actors, which could be profit or not for profit. There are also private or, in or, or independent providers. Interestingly, in uh, France, there is the so-called third sector, which is uh, um, addressing uh, resources to care elderly, elderly people or um, patients needi needing uh, rehabilitation. Uh, also in this case, we decided to apply the definition of integrated care provided by Hope Exchange participants, which is again um, uh, focused on four key concepts, uh, so bringing patients close to home, considering several dimensions of, of integration of care, uh, underlining the importance of an effective ICT tool, but also um, relying on the collaboration of professionals with different background. Uh, the uh, dimensions that uh, have been uh, included as uh, uh, strengths are breadth of ambition and innovation management. Uh, breadth of ambition, why? Because uh, um, in France, and more specifically in Ile-de-France, uh, um, uh, it has been settled this uh, founding program called uh, Territory of Digital Care, which was addressing with uh, resources 80 million of euro uh, for uh, the years encompassed between 2014 and 2017. These resources uh, are aimed at implementing tech solution in order to support the patients to navigate in the health system, but also to strengthen collaboration among health professionals. Um, then the dimension innovation management has been chosen because in Ile-de-France, uh, uh, in France in general, but then in Ile-de-France particularly, uh, there was this national strategy for health where um, ICT has been seen as uh, the crucial tool to um, reach the uh, objectives set by the national strategy itself. A further strategy put in place is this e-health strategy, which is aimed at uh, developing telemedicine solution in order to support uh, patients, especially in rural areas. 
And then, uh, in this, interestingly, um, uh, it was created the National Strategic Committee of ICT in Health. The weaknesses point are readiness to change, rate it to, <coughs> and the population approach. So the readiness to change has been uh, included as a weakness point because, uh, because the integration of health and social services was not that successful because um, uh, it was a lacking of coordination be between, among the different level interested uh, in, in the uh, definition of health uh, policies. So, um, in Ile-de-France, uh, what uh, uh, is crucial is uh, trying to reach the shift from an hospital-centric model to a, to a um, model of integration of care more close to the patient following a top-down approach. In this case, the political engagement is very important, according to what um, has been uh, said by the stakeholders involved in the um, survey. The second uh, point uh, included in weakness, as I was anticipating, is the population approach. Why? Because uh, some initiatives, uh, in, in order to uh, support a prevention program, have been uh, put in place, but these are related only to some uh, diseases. Um, uh, the um, program of prevention that have been mentioned uh, have been the one aimed to myocardial, myocardial infarction and uh, uh, pneumonia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think what's fascinating so far, it certainly is for me and I, I think it will be for you, is actually starting to see the kind of, you know, getting that overview of the different health and care systems and then actually starting to see how that rating is emerging. And I think there are some real common themes and you can also start to see where some regions are actually very strong in particular dimensions and others are rating themselves quite low. So I, I think that's really where you start to get a flavour of how you can actually use this tool um, for twinning and coaching potentially as well. So we'll come on to that. So next up is, um, a, I can't read with my specs on, is Pa from um, the Medical and Diagnostic Centre in Poland. Hello, everybody. Thank you for introducing me. Uh, I do this model for the micro scale. I come from microscope because I'm a provider in the primary care level. And this is our organization, which is really uh, take, a, uh, this, take a care about the patient on the east border of European Union, just near the Belarusian border. This, we take a care about the 10 per percent of this population, which, uh, which is about uh, 84,000 people in GP's practice. In our system, the GP is a gatekeeper, and there is the very popular situation that the, a lot of patients now, this is the picture on the top, show the nowadays situation that a lot of patients come to the, to the GPs, some of them very oftenly, some of them very rare, and they come to the GPs when the, their conditions are very, uh, very bad, and they look for uh, uh, help where the help is not, not real, uh, can, can be done. And this is the problem in our, sorry, this problem in our GP situation. And another one thing, we change the status to put this patient, to put the initiative to, to invite the patient to the GP practice, and GP with the team, which connect to the nurse, medical assistants, uh, midwife, they take a care about the patients. And the patients, each patient have a own health plan. Some of them, they're, they're healthy, they have a special plan, and the patient with the chronic, uh, chronic condition, they have a special care plan as well. In our model, we, we want to fulfill about 80% of health healthcare needs with collaboration with the GP with these five crucial specialists put on the list. And with the team, 
which include the psychologists, dietitians, educations, and physiotherapists. And we are really emphasized on the preventive medicine and chronic disease management. This is the, this is the Shiroko model for our region. We take care of only about 10% of this region. And we've, we know there's the, the areas of strength that the people really want to change the situation which is now. And they really want to move to the new techniques, remove the inhibitors. And area of weakness is there is IT system is still very weak. We have not the, the specialists are not very keen to put the right information to the system. And the systems are not really good to take uh, results of their work. Another one thing is this evaluation method, that people don't have a good evaluation method in our, our system. And there is a compare to, uh, sorry, this, this two models, East Mazovia model and our own model, you can see this the, the, they, we cover much more than the, the average in the region. Here is this two ways, one of, for the healthy people, every five years we invite the people to a healthy checkup, and second one, this is the way for people who, are, who have chronic conditions and they are uh, grouped for the diagnosis related groups and they have special status. We, in our organization, we put the sex status. First of all, the people who are not really keen to come to the, to the GPs, who are non compliance people, and they have a status zero. The people who are, who are well checked and in health, they have status one. And the people with chronic conditions have a free status which in the stable conditions, in the condition we need the periodic control visit, and the people with unstable condition. Last status concern on the people in the homes. So each member of our organization know the status of the people and know what to do with, the, with this, how to manage with this people. And the last slide, our, our model is one of the, uh, one of the uh, example who was put on the, uh, our government, government uh, program, pilot program, about new GPs, uh, new uh, pilots uh, coordinated care study in GP level. It starts in January uh, 2018. Thank you. Excellent, thank you very much. Okay, and next up is some guy who follows us around everywhere we go, every event across Europe, he pops up. No, I'm only joking, Klaus. Um, so, <laughs> I hope he's still talking to me after this. So, Klaus from Region of Southern Denmark. That's the button. Well, thank you, Jonna. Uh, that's just because you're so good looking. <laughs> Can't help it. Um, just a short introduction to, to the Danish healthcare system. It's, it's, in reality, it, it's, it's quite simple. There is uh, three main players in, in that. That's the regions who runs and owns the hospital. It's the municipalities who are in charge of uh, home care, um, nursing homes and rehabilitations. And then we, of course, have the GPs, uh, which are in charge of whatever GPs normally do. And uh, they are... Uh, in principle private companies, but uh, in reality paid by the, the regions, 99.9% uh, .9 or something like that. Um, so that's the three players that are in, in the Danish healthcare system. And you can say we are quite happy to not have a uh, freedom of choice in, in the sense that, uh, that GP, uh, the GPs are the gatekeepers for the, for the Danish healthcare system. We have also, and I think that's the, also the background why we are working with integrated care, has been a process in the Danish healthcare system over the last 20 years or something where we have been centralizing and closing hospitals to a level where we are probably 
at the moment down to from 160 hospitals to around 30 uh, hospitals uh, now. So there has been a major centralization. And at the same time, we have reduced the length of stays in hospitals to a level where it probably can't get lower anymore. So when we look at our basis for the, for the integrated care, we have, a, we have a, for the assessment of that is that we have an ecosystem that is covering all the hospitals in, in the region. Uh, but also an ecosystem that covers all GP practices and all GP systems. Um, we have fully integrated, implemented electronic medical records at all hospitals, but also in all municipalities and all, all GPs. And we have the full integration of all the clinical specialities in the, in the hospital system. So we say normally that we are a nearly fully electronic uh, healthcare system in, in, in Denmark. We're not quite there yet, but pretty close. The integrated care model in, in, in Denmark and in the region of South Denmark is, you can say, it builds on, on two major components, where the first one is the, the interesting and, and the complex one. There is actually a really complex set of agreements between regions and municipalities about how is the work divided in between us, who has the responsibilities for doing what, what are the payment structures behind that, who is paying for what, what are the uh, incentives to do that. Um, these these uh, agreements make sure that when a patient has been ready for discharge, they are actually discharged and uh, sent out of the hospital to the municipalities, otherwise the municipalities have to pay. The agreement about this is supported by clinical pathways that is um, describing who is the responsibilities, what are the, game, what are the goals that we are doing, how are we doing that. So there is a set of political agreements, there is a set of clinical pathways, and that is also all supported by electronic communication that grows across the sectors. So there's a, a clear link between the political system the clinical system and the IT system behind that. And that has been the whole development in the, in the Danish healthcare system that we, if we want to maintain the division of work and make sure that we can deliver the right quality for the patients, we need to have a, a, these system and these processes set up uh, in, a clear, in a clear way. And we have been working with this actually back from the 90s or something like that. So it's, it's a long process that we have been in. What we have added on top of that now is a shared care platform that is um, focused on chronic patients where we extract a set of relevant information for this group of patients that can be seen across the sectors. All the other information is sent around, so that's integrated into the systems. But now we also want to present the relevant information in one screenshot with, for each of the chronic diseases that is visible for GPs, municipalities, hospitals, and of course the patients themselves. So this shared care puzzle has been put on, on top of, of the existing infrastructure. So when we are looking at our strengths, it's of course that we have the infrastructure, we have the political governance uh, to support that, we have the funding models, models uh, uh, to support that. So, so that's, you can say, all the basic things running quite well. Uh, when I looked at it, we, we are surprisingly bad in actually using all the data that we have to have this uh, uh, population approach. And it might be the structure that we have that we don't need it. At least we don't do it so much. Uh, and that's one of the, one of the weaknesses that we have in the, in the Danish system at the moment. We have the potential, but we are, for some reasons, not doing it. So, thank you. I'm actually very surprised. Um, I'm going to go back. Not that this is my job to comment, but I'm going to comment. I'm really surprised at innovation management, because Klaus 
that's why we work so closely with you, because for innovation, you guys... <laughs> I'm surprised at that. I thought that may have been higher. We'll come on to it in the session, yeah, but anyway... Uh, that makes sense. We'll come on to that in the in the session where we look at it. But yeah, surprising. Okay, so um, last up, even better looking chap, Igor, from uh, Basque Country. So I think we're going to. This is our final snapshot session before we move on to the main implementation sessions. Good morning, everyone. I'll just show in, in just in three slides what we are doing in, in integrated care in the Basque country and uh, <clears throat> some of the issues related to, to the tri diagram. So this is the, the Basque country, the population of the Basque country, two million people financed by taxes. About one third of the government uh, budget goes to the is allocated in the health system. It's universal health coverage. And this is the, our health providers. Uh, most of them, you see, are uh, integrated care organizations, about 13 uh, of them, two subacute hospitals and three mental health nets. And the workforce for the, in the Basque Health Service, around uh, 30,000 people working in that. So when we talk about integrated care in, in the Basque country, uh, we, we, we near that time, in, in 2009, the, the what's what we are facing in the future. And, and now we're trying to, at that, uh, at that time also, to, to work on how. So in our, in our uh, system, the, the answer for that question, how can we face the future, we did it in, in, two, in two levels. One is a, a structural integration, and the other one is more about a clinical and functional integration, it's a, it's a lower level. But talking about uh, the structural level, we uh, sort of we match these uh, integrated care services within, in, in, in our country. We, we had at that time the primary level and the hospital level. So we, we did it, just to put it into one, just one board to gov for governments, this, this system. So uh, this is the, the new organization since about, since 2012, and the, the process uh, um, uh, stopped the, um, in 2016. So it's quite, quite new. And the, the, the pillars of this probably a process goes to a new integra integrative governments to call different cultures, primary and hospital level, becoming just one, which is quite, quite challenging. Uh, and population approach, not just for disease approach, but also health approach for people with no diseases. So this is a big change uh, in order to uh, manage this new population. And uh, new culture and values should be come up with this in this process. So this is quite challenging. And according to the the this is part of the diagram, we see some strengths and some uh, uh, weaknesses. Uh, in the red one, I think. Oh, sorry. In the red one, finance and funding is uh, one of the uh, uh, weaknesses in in our case, and also the. Uh, innovation, innovation uh, management, and these trends goes in breadth of ambition and population approach. Just uh, in few words, and uh, just uh, as an, an example, uh, when we talk about breadth of ambition, how the government and the vast health service uh, face this process. Just uh, an example: uh, when we began with this process in, in 2009, 20, 2010, just one small organization, one, one a territory in the vast country, very small, 8,000 8, seats in the population, went into integrated care organization. At that time, we just was uh, like a pilot experience. We, we didn't know how we, how we would work. Um, but in, in 2012, even though we didn't have to, um, let's say, um, assessment, if it was better or worse, uh, very clearly, the, the government uh, uh, says uh, that 
every old organization would become an uh, integrated care organization from some far. So in a way, just to, to uh, tell you how we, we challenge that, that, that issue. And the other one is the population approach. I think Esteban is much more much, uh, informed in that, but what we do have in the, in the vast country is a, a tool for stratify all the population in the, like the Kaiser pyramid. And another example, when we started with this process, uh, 2010, 2010 or something like that, nobody knew about the, what stratified population was about. Now, I'm not saying that all those 30,000 people know about what stratify means, but I would say that many of the professionals we are working with, it, they, they use this word. They know, in a way, they know what it means, more or less, which is a big, uh, big step. And, and the other one, uh, and in the, in the weak aspects, um, I think Klaus is no problem with financing, but, but we, we do, all, I think all of us, this is a, it's a big challenge, a big problem. Um, the, we have allocated much money in the, in the system. That, that, that's true. But when, when we, I think we assess in, in is not such a good uh, way this, this item. I would say that there is, there is lots of um, good strategies, good books, good written. But when we try to implement those strategies, into the, the arena, I think that probably we should need more money to do that. And uh, probably we lack of that. And the same issue to uh, innovation. We've got very, very good at strategies and that right now. But when we, and even, in, and also in some of the organizations, we have some specific professionals working in that issue and in innovation and, and so on. But when we just try to make it system size in, in the whole system, I think uh, we are not very much uh, good, good at that. So, well, this is uh, our experience and our uh, diagram. Thank you very much. Thank you, Igor. So that was our whistle-stop tour, just uh, focusing on some of the regions who have tested the Shiroku tool. Um, and as I said earlier, I think it's quite fascinating actually to compare uh, the results and outcomes. So moving on for our, for, well, our final session before lunch, we'll stop at 12.45 for lunch. Um, this is the next change to the programme. So unfortunately, our colleague Lisa Lundgren from Norbotten was not able to be with us today. So we've had a, one or two changes to the, uh, to the actual programme. Um, so